My name is Hannah, and this is my beauty budget. Hey y'all, so as you know, if you have watched any of my recent videos, Joe and I are moving to a new apartment. We are right in the throes of packing. Most things I think are pretty much packed at this point, and tonight I'm packing up my makeup and skincare, everything that's here on the vanity. What's in the bathroom isn't gonna be in this video, but most of what I use is here. I do most of my skincare sitting here rather than over the bathroom sink. So I'm just gonna film it. I might do a little bit of decluttering as I go. I might not. I've decluttered a lot of different areas in my collection lately, so I don't feel like it's bloated right now. I'm not really sure exactly how this video will unfold. I just hope that it's interesting. So without further ado, let's go ahead and get into the meat of the video. So the first thing I'm going to do is to pack a little bag for myself to do skincare and makeup during the move. So we are now three days out from our move. So there are going to be three nights, tomorrow night, the next night, and then the night after that, during which we'll be sleeping in this house and I'll be doing all of my skincare in this house and then the next morning doing makeup. And then the next night after that, the fourth night after tonight, we'll be in the new place and I'll be able to unpack some more of my skincare and use more of it if I want to. So I'm going to pack a little basically three day bag of skincare and makeup to get me through. So I put my deodorant in here, it's the Toms of Maine. I have this little travel size of the Moroccan Oil Dry Texture Spray. It's my favorite dry texture spray and I actually do have a full bottle of it right now. But I'm going to pack that one. This one was given to me by my friend Heather. She has a YouTube channel, Love Heatherette. When she came to visit she brought this for me and this is an extremely convenient thing to have right now. This is the Cerave Skin Renewing Night Cream. I have a couple night creams I'm trying to get through right now, but this one is my favorite. I have the Herbivore Lip Balm. This came from my Velvet Report box. I really, really like Lindsay, who owns and runs Velvet Report, and she sent me their Rose skincare box, and this was in it, and I love it. I've probably used more than half of it by now. My sunscreen, it's the Erin's Faces Peptide SPF 30, a beautiful mineral sunscreen. If I were only bringing one thing with me, it would be this. I'm putting this rose tone spray in kind of like as a toner spray setting spray. This also came from the Velvet Report Rose Beauty Box. And look, I'm halfway through it. I really like this product. And then for serums and oils, I'm going to keep using this serum from The Ordinary. It's the niacinamide and zinc serum. I'm trying to pan this. I'm not going to repurchase it and I'm really trying to get through it. So I'm just going to keep on chugging even when we're moving. And then I decided to keep in here this Oil by Moon Aknari Brightening Youth Serum. I think that's what it is. Serene gave this to me, Serene Wu. She also has a channel, a lovely channel, and she's also talking a lot about budgeting these days. And she gave this to me, and I really like it. It says Brightening Youth Serum, but it's really just a blend of oils. And... I've been using it almost every day since I opened it. There's something about it I really love. A more thorough review of this will come when it's in my empties. And I'm also throwing my UFO oil by Sunday Riley, the salicylic acid oil, because I'm kind of breaking out right now. I'm sure that it's just stress and my upset schedule, but I'm starting to feel those feelings around my mouth, like my skin's sort of starting to prickle through. And so I just want to keep using this consistently, even though the next couple of days will be different. So that's a pretty pared down group of skincare products for me, but I'll be fine for the next couple of days. And here's what I'm doing for makeup. I grabbed this Becca Backlight Priming Filter. This was sent to me from Octoly in a set, actually. They sent the backlight priming filter and a foundation. And I was hesitant to request it because it's so hard for me to find foundations that match me and foundations that I like. And this one is supposed to be, I, I or you know what it was, reviews I've seen of it say that it's quite thick, but when I read the claims on the website, it seemed like it was supposed to be quite skin-like and not thick at all. So I decided to <laughs> put my faith in the claims and I think I shouldn't have. So I also looked 
up the color and it looked like a lot of very very light skinned people were finding that this does work for them. It's a little too dark and a little too yellow on me. I might use it for a couple of Poema photo shoots before I write it off entirely but I'm pretty sure that I'm not going to be keeping that foundation. I'll try to find someone who does match it and it also it is just quite thick and foundation-y on me and I'm moving more and more in the direction of serum -y and lightweight base products. But the backlight priming filter I really love. I'm delighted to have a full size of it and I've decided to pack it to keep using while we're moving. The NARA Soft Matte Creamy Concealer in Chantilly. It's my go-to spot concealer and I also packed the little brush that I use, the little Morphe B19 brush. That's the brush that I use with it. And I packed this um, Veil Retouching Fluid from Hourglass. A full review of this is coming soon in another video as well. It is just light enough for me. It's an exact match for my skin tone, so it's not brightening at all in terms of color, but it is brightening in terms of its qualities, and it's quite a nice natural and very fluid product, and I've been using it a lot lately, so I'm gonna hang on to that during these three days. And for my eyes, I'm just putting in this little Lancome Eye Kajal and Mascara. That's what I have on my eyes today, along with this Stila Heaven's Hue Highlighter, which I've buffed over my eyelids and a little bit onto my cheeks. It's kind of been my go-to lately. And my Sephora Color Corrector, I use a color corrector almost every day. And then I realized with some annoyance that it won't be practical for me to pack or to, to keep using this cake of soap that I'm using for my brows. I need to pack it, I can't take it, leave it out. So I'm gonna throw the NYX Control Freak Brow Gel into this bag even though I don't feel like it works that well for me along with my ColourPop Brow Pencil. And then in this pouch here at the top, I've put all 10 of the lipsticks that I shopped my stash for, mostly just to keep them all together because I didn't want to pick a couple and put them in here and then pack the other ones and have them get lost from each other. I'm trying to use one of them almost every day and there's room in here and it's not like I'm packing this in a suitcase to fly in an airplane or something so I thought I might as well just put them in there and so that's that. I also have a perfume in there. I'm using the Histoire des Parfums Ambre 119 I think is what it's called. It was a gift from my friend Julia for my birthday, and if you've been watching my channel since the very, very beginning, you might remember an empty of it being in my empties. It's a scent that I really like. It's like a, an incense -y vanilla. I also put a hairband in here, and there will be a few more things going in here from the bathroom, like my oil cleanser, my second cleanse, my toothbrush, etc. But in terms of everything that's here, I think that we can go ahead and get cracking, so I'm going to put some boxes together and start. Alright, this is a little awkward for me, but I think it might be the best way to do it because I just realized that when I'm standing up you can't see my face in the frame. So I'm going to go ahead and start putting stuff in here. I think I'm going to go ahead and start with my eyeshadow palettes. I just decluttered my eyeshadow palettes and I don't think that I need to offload any of them at this moment, but we'll see as we're going along. I also wanted to say that we're not moving very far and I'm actually going to carry these boxes myself over to the new place. I mean, tomorrow morning I think when we drive to work we're going to park in our new spot in our new apartment building and I'm going to take these boxes by hand. So the movers aren't going to be throwing these around and that's why I don't feel like I need to put in a lot of padding or anything. I'm just trying to collect them all in one place and kind of get a sense of what I have as I go along. Yeah, I just glanced through these eye palettes and cheek palettes and they're definitely all keepers, which isn't too much of a surprise because it's only been a matter of weeks since I thoroughly decluttered this part of my collection. I think that next up is lip products and you know what? I am on the verge of doing a serious, ruthless, vicious lipstick declutter. I don't think that right now I'd be able to focus as seriously as I want to on it in order to get rid of the number of things that I want to get rid of. So I'm going to take a rain check on that for you guys. I'm going to put all my lipsticks in this box, 
But one of the first things I film in the new space will be that lipstick declutter. I think I'm going to go ahead and put it off until then. The other thing is, I think that some of the ones that I shot my stash for might not make it through the declutter, but I want to see out the end of that project before I do that video. So the lipsticks aren't being decluttered now, but many of these are seriously on the chopping block. There might be some things in this little guy that I can get rid of. This is where I keep my lip glosses, which will, lip glosses will be in the lip declutter. It'll be comprehensive. Eyeliners and stuff. I think it's this area that could get decluttered a little bit. So, so this is a Laura Mercier caviar stick in Eau Naturelle. I love the color of this and I love the idea of using it, but I always forget to reach for it. It's kind of in here on a trial basis. And you know what I'm going to do? I'm going to put it in my little travel bag because then I'll try it out over the next couple of days while we're in this process. And I think it will pair well with a bold lip too. So I'm going to kind of put, shop my stash for this real quick. But these guys I'm up here, I think I can do something with. So these are three Tarte Chrome paints that Wendy sent me. I love them so much, but I haven't really been using them because they're bulky, they're in these drawers, they're put away, they're, they're, they're messy, and I don't want to get rid of them, but I think I can, I can let go of one of them. So the one I had always been longing for that I was so, so grateful that she sent is Martini. That's sort of the dirty olive one. I'm going to keep that one for sure. And then Top Yacht, it's such a gorgeous champagne color, but it's not practical for me because if I use it all over my lid, it just makes my lid look really blanked out. And this isn't the kind of thing I would reach for for just like an inner corner highlight. For that, I'm gonna go into a palette or into one of my singles. So I'm gonna put Top Yacht, this beautiful kind of champagne gold chrome paint into my giveaway box and I'll give it to someone sometime soon that would be lovely. The other one, Park Ave Princess, I hung on to it because it's so beautiful and sparkly. It's so, so lovely. I just feel like I have so many gorgeous coppery colors in singles and in my Natasha Denona palettes. Hmm, I think I do want to give this one another chance though. I just remember swatching it next to a bunch of eyeshadows and feeling like it outperformed all of them. But this is on the chopping block. If I don't use it and fall back in love with it within the next month, it'll go. All right, and then I have these two Natasha Denona Chroma Crystal Top Coats, both of which I don't use as frequently as I wish I did. And I just talked in my favorites video, which might actually go up after this, but I talked about how I've been really into a sheer shimmer all over the lid, and I've been reaching for these a little bit more lately because I've been going for that effect. But I find them difficult to work with, really difficult to work with. And I think at this point I'm ready to let one of them go. I am going to keep Gris Marron, the gray-brown one. For some reason I always read it in French when I read it, even though it has it in English and then in French. I always read the French name. I'm going to keep that and I'm going to find someone to take the one called Nude, which actually just reads very, very peachy and warm on me. And I feel like if it were more of a neutral nude, I would love this product. And again, if I want that peach color on my lids, I'm going to reach for a single eyeshadow or something that's easier to work with or something that's more foolproof. This one tends to crease and crust quite badly on me and because I've been so into this eye look lately I've actually used it a number of times over the past couple weeks and it's it's pretty much disappointed me every time I hate to admit it these are products that I really want to love or, or this formula this Natasha Denona thing it's something that I really want to love and after owning them for a couple years I just have to admit that I don't love them. So I'm at the point where I'm ready to let go of this one. I'm going to keep Gris Marron, the gray-brown one, for a little while longer and the dream about that one will actually probably also eventually die, but baby steps. All right, I'm gonna take a look at these brushes. I actually did recently kind of go through and quickly declutter my brushes. There are a number of brushes in my giveaway box that I just haven't washed yet, 
and I need to do that before I give them away. When I say giveaway box, I just mean the box that I keep of stuff that I will like give away to friends when I see them. I'm not doing an official giveaway. Um, or, you know, if I send someone something, I'll like slip one of those things in there. Um, so I don't think I have any brushes that need to be offloaded right now. I do have some brushes in here that I haven't talked about in my purgatory box thing yet, and I'll talk about them soon. Um, a number of new brushes kind of joined my collection. I've got to film Hannah's Reckoning soon, talk about these brushes. I might need to film two Reckonings this month. But I think that I can go ahead and pack these brushes. I'm going to leave them in their containers. I think that they'll be fine traveling. I'll just need to carry the boxes gently. Right here I have a collection of little samples <laughs> that I've been working from to try to figure out which new base products I'm going to acquire. So there's this color corrector sample. I ended up buying the Sephora collection one. There are some samples of the Dior face and body, the Dior backstage foundation, and there are some samples of the Makeup Forever HD self-setting concealer. And there's a little sample of Charlotte Tilbury um, Hollywood Flawless Filter, which I thought was just so normal. It's just like a liquid highlight. It's just a liquid highlighter. It was worked up to be this like magical, multi-purpose, amazing face thing. And really it's just like a liquid highlighter. And I have liquid highlighters, so I wasn't that impressed by that. But how I felt about all of these and what I ended up buying will be revealed in a future video where I talk about my updated base makeup routine. For now, I feel like I've gotten what I needed to get out of all of these little samples, and so I'm going to go ahead and throw these away. This is another travel container that I have, or travel bag that I have, that I use sometimes when I'm traveling in airplanes. But right now, I'm just going to use it to pack a bunch of the makeup that's in this drawer. So I know you guys can't see the front part of the drawer, but I'm going to pack my blushes and highlighters and then I'm going to move through and pack like base products, foundation products that are back here and I will declutter as I go if necessary. I'm not going to be decluttering any blushes or highlighters because I just decluttered my single blushes and highlighters so I'm going to go ahead and put all of those guys into here. So here's my little tray of kind of everyday things, the mascaras, the concealers, base products, stuff like that, that I reach for on an everyday basis. I'm going to look through here and see if I think there's anything that I can let go of right now before packing it into this little container. Okay, right away this grody old sample of the glow formula from Kiehl's, it's like a glowy skin hydrator thing. I couldn't keep making myself try it after I tried it the first time. It's just a little dark for me and just not a thing. It's not going to make it into my empties. It's not worth putting into Hannah's Reckoning. It, it's done. Um, same with this little sample size of MAC strobe cream. I was experimenting with this for a while, using it for a while, and it's almost panned. And it's just, I don't want to just take it over to the new place just to use the last little drop and then put it in my empties. I'm just going to get rid of it now. All right, so that's those things. This little tray is disgusting with pencil shavings and makeup. So I am going to get all these bobby pins out and pack them separately, and then I'm gonna wash this guy before I pack it into a box. These are some packaging things. This is like the velvet case that came with the Kevin Aquan Neo Highlighter. Why, I just, why would I ever put it in here? I don't travel with it because I hated that the first one broke, so I treat it with kid gloves and I just keep it on my vanity. So I'm never gonna put it into this little case. I'm just gonna go ahead and leave this behind. And then here's a hook that clips onto some kind of makeup travel bag that I had at one time. I don't need either of these things. This is a little three pan magnetic palette that holds three large size round eyeshadows. It's a Makeup Forever palette. I was keeping this, I don't know why I was keeping this, and this is a perfect thing to put in my giveaway box the next time I have three single large size shadows that I want to declutter, I'll just put them in here and then I can give this to someone as a gift which will be really nice. So here are a bunch of little brush, they're like faux leather brush holders that came with a set of brushes that I was sent in PR actually. So the brushes are, they're already packed, but they're these 
Choco brushes. Spicy Choco. And I'll give them a thorough review in Hannah's Reckoning, but the short story is I love them. So there's little mini short handled brushes that are supposed to be perfect for travel. What I love about them is that they're so soft. They feel like Sadie's fur. They feel like Sadie's fur on me. And, they, but they're not, they're synthetic, they're not animal hair, but they're just incredibly, incredibly soft. They're really, really lovely. And then each brush came with its own little thingy like this to put them in for travel. But I don't need that because when I travel, I use one of these like travel thingies and, the, and it has slots for brushes and I just, I will put them in there instead of putting them in here. So I'm going to go ahead and get rid of all of these little individual cases for these brushes. I don't think I'll ever use them. Sadie's having that of it. She's mad. She doesn't want to move. Sadie's mad because she doesn't want to move. Alright, here we have kind of a conundrum. So these are two empty containers for the Cure Weiss products. Care Weiss is like a luxury, clean beauty brand, and they make beautiful cat hair, beautiful cream products. I purchased these, and then I, I panned one of them, or I, I hit pan. I used up a lot of both of them, and then they both went bad because I started getting really into makeup, and I got a huge collection of blushes, and they're made with really natural stuff, and so they... Um, they go bad, not like super quickly. I mean, I think it was maybe two years or something. Like they didn't go bad overnight, but they went bad faster than I could use them up. So I popped out the trays and threw them away of the bad product and I kept these containers, but I don't want to buy more. <laughs> I don't want to buy, I think the refills are like 50 or $45 or something. I don't want to buy more refills. I don't need more blushes. I really, really do love these and I could see myself buying one in the far future, but I don't think it's worth it to keep these containers around just in the event that that might happen. So I'm gonna put these in my giveaway box and I think I might ask, I think I have a friend who's interested in buying some more from Cure Weiss and I might ask her if she wants to adopt just these containers and then if she wants to purchase a product this size, she'll just have to purchase the refill instead of having to purchase the full-sized product. So I'm gonna to try to find someone to adopt these. And if I can't, uh, they're metal, so they should be recyclable. These two travel tins for Cinema Secrets brush cleaner, I just never use these, I don't need them. Here's my box of um, sharpeners. I have a couple of different sizes of sharpeners in here. I'm just gonna pop that in. This is the little bowl I use for brush cleaning when I do it on the fly. This is my X-Acto knife for deep potting. I'm going to put that face down in a brush jar. All right, here we have some more complexion products. This is like my foundations and powders and sponges and stuff. And I've, I haven't done an official declutter of this kind of category because there are so few. It's like it would be maybe not that beefy of a video. I'm just gonna check it out right now and see if there's anything I feel like I can part with. Sorry, this, stu this stuff is really gross. Like it's covered in product. It's just like a bit of a nasty part of my drawer that I haven't cleaned in a while. So please forgive me. No judgy, no judgy. This is a bottle of Glossier Skin Tint and I think that I'm gonna pass it along. Not because I hate it, but because I reach for it so infrequently and it's an, it's kind of a nice product. I think some people would really like it. For example, I think my sister, like I think if I sent this to my sister, she'd probably use it and use it all up. Whereas if I keep it, I'm just gonna not use it up. I'm gonna use other things and it'll probably go bad. All right, I have four Real Technique sponges right here and they're, they're all, they've all been used. They're like all going at once and I barely ever use sponges anymore. So I am just gonna actually keep the what am I going to do? I'm going to keep the two that are in the best shape and I'm going to go ahead and retire the two messier ones. I don't think that they are like completely destroyed yet. It's just that I use sponges so infrequently that I don't want four used ones bopping around in my drawer. It just seems idiotic. Here's the Bare Minerals Original Foundation Mineral... Mineral... Yeah, Mineral Foundation and Fair. I used this for years and years and years, and I know now that it's too pink for me. It's the lightest shade Bare Minerals makes. It's just light enough for me, but it's 
not the right undertone for me. It really doesn't match my skin. However, I think I'll match my cousin's skin. I think she might actually use this product and there's most of it left. I'm gonna send it to her. Everything else here is are actually almost panned and I'm gonna keep it and go ahead and pan it and put it in my empties. So the NARS Sheer Glow Foundation is what I've been using for the Poema photo shoots for a couple of years now. This bottle's almost empty. And then I have these three foundations from The Ordinary that are just slightly different. One's the serum and two are the coverage and the coverage, one of them is the silver toned one or something. They're just all three slightly different, but they're all my color. And I use them as mixers. I've been mixing them in sometime for the photo shoots. I don't like them. I don't want to buy any more of them, but I think that I can still get some use out of these grody old bottles just for those photo shoot days, just for when I need like a full face and I, I just am kind of like scraping everything that I can grab to get my skin covered without having to buy something new. So I'm gonna really wait until these are all completely done and like I can't use them anymore before I actually buy a full bottle of foundation to use for that purpose. I'm just gonna put these in this little bag for travel. And then the same is kind of true of these powders. This is the Besame Brightening Violet Powder and I took the little sifter out because it was almost done and there are several uses left in it, but I've gotten most of it used up. I rarely powder, but when I do, I really like the brightening effect of this. And then I have this teeny, tiny, tiny sample size of the Laura Mercier translucent powder that I use for the same purpose. I'm gonna keep those guys. There's lashes in here. I rarely use lashes, but I don't have the wherewithal to go through this box right now. I'm just gonna transfer my box of lashes from one house to another. I do, however, have the wherewithal to go through my glitters right now. These are all of my glitters and glittery type things. And oh, there's a little powder magnetized to the bottom of there. Is that Kevin Aquan powder? I'm going to keep that. So these are all my glitters, glitter glues, and glittery type things. I am going to put them into this travel bag that's still on my lap, but I'm going to offload some of them as I go. Here is something that I should never have bought. This is a Martha Stewart Crafts just craft glitter. And it's an iridescent glitter in sugar cube. I saw the drag queen Adore Delano doing a get ready with me and using this color of Martha Stewart Craft glitter on her cheeks and she looked amazing, but she was using the big chunky one and I couldn't track that one down and so I compulsively ordered this much finer glitter from Amazon or something at the time. It was just one of those really, really dumb compulsive shopping behavior things. And it's just a big jar of craft glitter. And I have so many other cosmetic glitters that actually work and are beautiful. And I've just been hanging on to this one because it's like a beautiful jar of beautiful glitter that I never use. And when I do use it, it doesn't even look good. So I'm going to probably donate this. Okay, this is my original Stila Glitter and Glow in Smoky Storm. When it first was released, I went to an Ulta, I believe, and they were almost all sold out, but this was the color I wanted and they had this color and I bought it and I used the F out of it. I've used it so much and it's both almost completely panned and all dried out. So it's life is over. Also, I have a mini of Smoky Storm that came in a mini set like a year later, and this one is still nice and wet inside and functional, and there's plenty of product in there. So goodbye, beautiful, original Stila Glitter and Glow. You served me so well. You know, I think I'm also going to have to say goodbye to Diamond Dust. So it's one of the minis. I have Kitten Karma and Smoky Storm and Diamond Dust. They came in a kit, I think like two Christmases ago, and it's all dried out. And I actually, most of the product is gone, that's why it's dried out, and I actually did pop the stopper out and continue using it. It is so bright, maybe my favorite Stila Glitter and Glow color ever, but uh, it, it has lived its life now, so it's gonna go. The Cover FX Glitter Drops. I wanted them so badly, I thought I wanted them. I got this little mini, and they just, they just are dull. They're just not all they're cracked up to be. They don't give me that glitter fairy look that I want. I think the it's like they're they're a hoax or something. They're like not real not real glitter. Um, I, I'm, and I I don't know. I think I could probably find someone who wants to take this. I'm gonna put it in my giveaway box. Here's another craft glitter I should never have bought. It's just a light pink 
really micro fine glitter, donating that. Here are two craft glitters that I really do like. They're really big and chunky and have a bunch of different shapes in them. These are so very like the Lemonhead LA glitters. Hold on. Okay, so this little jar of glitter is like gold and silver chunky glitters mixed together. And it's, I don't know if you'll be able to see, I'm sitting so far back, but it's its here on the back of my hand. It's beautiful gold glitter. I stuck it on with glitter glue and it looks really pretty. But this silver glitter from Lemonhead LA that um, Wendy gave me a sample of, it's just glowing and beaming and looking incredibly gorgeous and it's so easy to apply because it's in its paste already. So I'm gonna let go of this one because I have that lemon head one. But this other one from the brand Glitties, which I think is so funny, both of these glitters are from a brand called Glitties, which is, it sounds like titties. I mean, come on. This other one from Glitties is really special. It's like a weird iridescent shifting almost holographic like purple blue and from a distance when i look in the mirror the way it catches the light is really special it's unique and very different from the lemonhead la one so i'm gonna hold on to this iridescent purpley blue glitties and i'm gonna try to use it sometime soon on my eyes or something because I this I've been sleeping on this these are two little containers of rhinestones that i always tell myself i'm gonna use like on my face or on my nail or something and I never do, donating. And then you know what? I'm gonna give away this little mini of the Milk Makeup Glitter Stick. Sorry, my camera just died. I, I think it's something one of my cousins might like. It's easy to use, it's nice, it's cute, it's trendy, but it's just it's just disappointing in terms of how it performs to me. It's not, it, it's not impact enough. It's like if I'm gonna wear glitter, I'm gonna go big and this is kind of like, Oh, I, I didn't really try because I'm so cool. And that, that's just not me. I, I really did try because I'm not cool. All right, I did super well with the glitters. I got rid of like more than half of the glitter type products that were there. And so now I can really focus on using the ones that I love. Because it's not that I don't love glitter, it's that I had a bunch of weird, annoying glitter bloating my glitter collection. And there might be room who knows, for one more sometime soon. So I am going to go wash my hands, actually, because there's glitter all over. And when I get back, I'm going to pack all of my skincare, which is right here, you can't see it, into these boxes. I'm actually gonna stand up and just do it, so I'll fast forward through it. But if there's anything that I'm going to declutter from my skincare that I wanna talk about, I'll sit down and I'll tell you about it like this, BRB. All right, so that's pretty much it. And Stuffy is barking to round out the video. This is his last moment ever on camera because this is the last video that I'm filming in the new space. I think that the one that I filmed before this is gonna go up after this, so it might be not the last one that you guys see, but it's the last one that I'm filming here. It has to be because I'm taking the lights over to the new space tomorrow. What's not in these two boxes? So, well, what what is in these two boxes? <laughs> what is in these two boxes is all of my makeup and skincare, except for the few items of skincare that I use in the bathroom. They're not totally full because I put a lot of things in standing upright. They kind of, you know, the, the footprint of these boxes is pretty much the footprint that everything takes up, although there are some things kind of packed in and around each other. But this is it, and I'm gonna carry these two boxes over by myself tomorrow and make sure that everything stays safe and undropped and unbothered. What's not in these two boxes? The purgatory box. So the purgatory box is right here in front of me and I'm going to have to, it, the purgatory box is kind of full and overflowing, I'm going to have to put the purgatory box into a separate box so I'll probably do that shortly. And then my little bag of giveaway makeup, the things that I kind of keep on hand to give to friends and family, that's not in this box. And then everything that's in the bathroom, which is just a couple of things. Also hair products, hair products aren't in these boxes. So this isn't the entire collection of the stuff that I need to bring over to, you know, move my functioning life and YouTube channel to the new space. It's not everything that's in here, but it's most of it. 
this is most of it. And um, that means that this whole thing is, is blank and empty. So th this drawer is completely empty and this surface is completely empty. And I'm proud of having gotten rid of a few things along the way. I have one, two, three, four, five, six, seven, eight, nine, ten, eleven, twelve discrete items of makeup basically that I decided I didn't need to take with me for the move. I've been doing, as I said, some pretty thorough decluttering, so this wasn't the big one, but it's nice to see that a move is a good occasion to kind of clear the dust and cobwebs out of the corners of a group of things that I love and cherish. Thank you so much for watching this video. I hope that it wasn't too weird or too boring, and I hope that you are remembering to take extra good care of yourself this week so that you can be the most effective version of yourself as you do your work in the world.